Welcome to another edition of Zeke in Action. I am your host, Richard Baitlick, and today we'll be taking a look at Zeke connection logs and NetFlow records. If you've been looking at the network security monitoring space for any amount of time, you've probably encountered the question, what is the difference between a NetFlow record and the Zeke connection logs? Now, in a video like this, I can't do full justice to NetFlow logs. I don't have access to the type of Cisco gear that you might encounter in the enterprise. I only have access to open source software. And in that respect, that's a positive because it means you can try out the same commands that I'm trying here using the same software and the same operating system and you can find out if my methods work or if they don't work. Uh, but what that means is I can't necessarily duplicate the type of environment you have and the types of challenges you might have. So consider this a step in the journey towards better understanding how your network works and a piece of the puzzle, if you will. So what is the problem that we're, we're trying to address here? Well, the problem we have is that we have a, some type of enterprise network, or honestly, this could apply to many other environments, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to be using a sample enterprise network. In this environment, we have four segments, one that connects to the internet, one that has a wireless segment, one that is a DMZ, and one is the internal network. And you may recognize this network. I've used it in my books and I've used it in previous videos. So the question we're going to answer here is, what could we get out of this network as far as either NetFlow logs or Zeek records? Let's uh, first look at Zeek. Now, if you're going to use Zeek, you might do something like this. You might deploy a network tap, uh, a specialized device that sits between, in this case, a central firewall that's also acting as a router and the switch that's providing internal network access. That network tap would passively send copies of the traffic that it sees without, uh, preferably <laughs> without any manipulation or other distortion and send that traffic to a dedicated sensor. That sensor, as we see in the lower right hand side, would simply sit there and collect the traffic that it's seeing on a network interface that would have no IP address and something like Zeek would watch that network interface, transform the traffic that it sees into transaction logs, extracted files, notices, all the other NSM data that we uh, have come to know and love using Zeek. That is one way to instrument that part of the network using a tap and uh, with, with Zeek. An alternative method would be to use a span port. And in this case, I show spanning the uh, firewall that's at the center of this diagram. Uh, you could just as easily span the uplink from the internal network switch. So either one would work. And in the case of a span port, you are also sending more or less, and this is a topic for another uh, time, I suppose, but you're sending more or less copies of the traffic that are being passed through that device. And that traffic is being sent again to our sensor where Zeke is listening again with on an interface without any IP address. And it uses its logic to generate transaction logs, extracted files, and so on. So those two deployments are essentially the same. The source of the traffic is a little bit different, but you can see how Zeke is working in each case. Now, when you use something like NetFlow, you have a different mechanism and a slightly different architecture. What you're doing when you're using NetFlow is you're having a system, typically a layer three device like a router or a firewall, and it is generating a new form of data, a NetFlow record. And it comes in several different versions. Uh, the most popular ones are versions five and nine. Uh, there's follow on versions like IP fix, uh, related versions like SFlow, um, there's a whole ecosystem around this idea of flow records, but the key point is that a device is generating these flow records. And that device is known as a NetFlow probe. That probe needs to send those records somewhere to be stored. And that's where our sensor comes into play here. In this case, I'm gonna call it more of a server uh, as opposed to a sensor, but it's, it's essentially forming that uh, or, or serving that purpose. On the server, a NetFlow collector will be listening and the probe will send its NetFlow records to that collector. A difference here, an important difference, is that that collector needs to have an IP address 
and that IP address you will have to communicate that information to the NetFlow probe so that the probe knows where to send those records. So in this case, I have the firewall generating NetFlow records and they're being sent to our sensor or server and it is recording those NetFlow records uh, to disk for us to be able to take a look at later. So is there a way to replicate this sort of environment using open source software? And the answer is yes. Uh, the software that I decided to use here has to take three uh, portions into account. I've mentioned the probe, I've mentioned the collector, we also need a viewer. Typically these NetFlow records are not written to disk in just a straight ASCII format that you could read using a program like CAT or less or more or whatever. Typically you need a specialized NetFlow viewer to see them. So you need an open source probe, an open source collector, and an open source viewer. And in my travels uh, along the NSM highway over the years, no one typically bundles all three of these things into one package. Generally, the probe is separate from the collector and the viewer. Uh, in previous years, I've used tools like uh, FProbe and uh, the Flow tools. However, uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using uh, SoftFlowD and then the NFCAPD and NFDump, which actually come together in a package called NFDump, uh, as my probe collector and viewer. And uh, it's nice to know that uh, SoftFlowD as our probe and then NFCAPD and NFDump uh, both support versions, uh, NetFlow versions 5 and 9. And I have the URLs there where you can uh, access them. In the system that I'll be using, I was simply able to install them uh, using the Debian package manager. I didn't have to do anything special. And that's actually one of the reasons why I didn't use Flow Tools. Flow Tools does not seem to be supported or it's not in the Debian Bullseye package repo anymore. And uh, one, of the, one of the tenets of this channel is to make it as easy as possible for people to replicate these results. So I didn't want to make it a little bit more difficult by having to download open source or having to download source code and compile it and all that. So for this demonstration, we're going to be using uh, SoftFlowD as our NetFlow probe. We'll use NFCAPD as our NetFlow collector and NFDump as our viewer. And if you're interested uh, in learning more about this, I recommend the great book called Network Flow Analysis that came out several years ago by Michael W. Lucas. Actually, I recommend uh, all of Michael W. Lucas's technical books. He is one of the finest technical authors we have, uh, possibly the finest uh, of our of our generation, or maybe the previous generation. Uh, <laughs> we share a generation, so we we've both been around for a little while. And I've used uh, Mr. Lucas's books so many times over the years to try to understand uh, very dense material, and he, he has just a wonderful way of communicating it. So I'd recommend you taking a look at his book if you're interested in that. Now, what does uh, this mean for the demonstration I'm going to provide now? Well, I didn't want to, and, and let me add that I wanted to make it as easy as possible for you to try this. I didn't want you to have to set up a whole network in order to replicate these results. My goal is always to make it as simple as possible and preferably to use a single computer whenever, whenever you can. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm setting up a virtual machine using VirtualBox on this Windows laptop, and I'll be running all of the software in the virtual machine there. So what that means is um, I'm going to imagine that I have uh, Zeek listening on a management interface. So typically Zeek would be li listening on a interface that's dedicated simply for watching traffic, uh, but that's not what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to have a single virtual box running uh, Debian Bullseye. It's going to be, Zeek's going to be watching that management interface and generating traffic based on whatever I do through the management interface. And you could imagine it would be the sim a situation here where uh, Zeek is connected to the network switch. T technically speaking, in this case, I'll be my, my system is connected via Wi-Fi, so it's not hardwired into a switch, but it's, it's logically the same idea. In a similar manner, I'm going to be running on the same box, I'm going to be running the NetFlow probe and collector on that system, and it will, both of those will also be watching the management interface. And inc incidentally, they'll be sending their NetFlow records to that same ma management interface. The probe will be sending the records to the management interface where the collector will be listening and write what it, writing what it sees to disk. So this, 
it, you know, logically, this is similar to what you would see uh, as far as the results. It is not the same wiring and connectivity that you would see in the enterprise, but the end result would be the same. You could just as easily uh, change things around a bit and have this set up in your enterprise network if you so desired. These are the commands I'm going to be running today. Um, the first three commands will set up the NetFlow probe collector and eventually the viewer once we have some records to look at for NetFlow v5. The second set of commands will do the same except for NetFlow v9. And the last set of commands are what I'm going to use to start up Zeek and take a look at the logs that we have there. So with that, let's get started. Now I have my, my um, VirtualBox system here running. It's running the same Debian Linux operating system that I deployed in the uh, Zeek in Action video 8, where I believe I showed how to install Zeek from scratch. And this is the same exact operating system that I, I used previously. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start our NetFlow v5 probe. All right. So what we now have is a NetFlow v5 softflow probe watching the main interface, the management interface on this system, ENP0S3. And it's uh, version 5, as you can see. And it is sending the records that it is generating to the management interface on port 5555. Now, I don't have anything listening there, so that's our next uh, job. We have to set up the nfcapd collector which I need to run in a separate window. Now that is sitting there waiting for any NetFlow v5 records to come through. My next step will be to set up the uh, NetFlow v9 probe. I'm starting that probe. Now I will set up the NFCAPD collector. So now that is running. And as you can see, if we go back to the V5 probe, we're starting to get some records. So these are being written to disk, but they are also uh, going to standard out. So you can see, for example, here we have a record from 192.168.4.177 going out to, looks like some kind of a broadcast address. You can see it's UDP and it's going to port 1900. So this is one of these, um, I think Windows, some kind of broadcast activity that's going on there. And you can scroll up, you can see there's some more of it. Anyway. So that's a good sign. We know that uh, that is working. And I haven't seen anything yet here. I noticed this in my testing that, oh, there we go. There's our V9 records. And we should be seeing similar uh, data. Now, one of the things that those of you who are more familiar with NetFlow might say is, oh, you didn't set up any of the templates you need to get more data out of V9. That's true. V9 is extensible. You can provide it with more options to get more types of data. I didn't have that here. And in fact, if you start looking online, you really don't see much is in the way of exporting that type of data using NetFlow v9. Almost everyone just uses it the same as NetFlow v5. I think most of the customization comes into play when you're dealing with actual Cisco gear that, that generates these records. Um, again, my purpose with this demonstration was to show you how to get some type of NetFlow generated in your environment and a way to look at those records. Uh, and incidentally, this isn't the way you would look at the records in production. You wouldn't just sit here and watch uh, records scroll by on a terminal. We'll show in a second how to look at those. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, start Zeek. And I'm going to uh, run this command. Now, I just installed or just upgraded this operating system prior to doing this demo. So 
that upgraded Zeek to version 4.2.0. And so uh, Zeek Control noticed that, so we'll go ahead and do that. And it looks like Zeek is running, which is good. So at this point, we have NetFlow v5, uh, NetFlow v5 probe via Softflow D running. We have a NetFlow v9 probe courtesy of Softflow D. And we also have Zeek running. And in this next window, I'm just going to generate some traffic that hopefully will create some more records for us to look at. And I'll just use the Lynx browser to visit Google. There we go. Let's go to the Zeek website based on that. Look at that. Actually, it's kind of nice to see the Zeek operating or the Zeek uh, page rendering so well in um, <laughs> in in links. Look at that. That's great. Okay. Now, as we're doing that, we're generating more NetFlow logs, and we should also be generating uh, some Zeek logs. Let's take a look at first. We'll take a look at the Zeek logs. Let's see if we have anything. Let's do this. Try it again here. All right. Actually. We can do that again and just put the, there we go. Okay, so we are generating some logs and I am going to take a look at that con log. So there's our con log, it's being generated as we, as we sit and watch. There you can see there's, there's new records coming in. In fact, I wonder if it's possible to. Ah, we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it like that. So this is a good sign. We're getting our connection logs via Zeek. Our our connection log is uh, one of the many transaction logs that Zeek creates, as well as our NetFlow logs. Now I will create a new window here. By the way, you might be wondering, why don't I just use the interface for the virtual machine? Why am I dealing with all these uh, terminals? I really am not a fan of interacting with virtual machines through the screen as, d as displayed. Um, I really like to get outside of them and then secure shell into them because I can do things like, or it seems to be a lot easier to me to be, do things like copying commands like I'm doing here or whatever else it is. So this is just a, a workflow that I tend to use. Okay, we haven't shown how to take a look at these NetFlow logs other than them streaming in in a manner like that. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So we're going to use uh, nfdump, and I've got a sample command there. I'm not going to actually run that exact command because what we have to do is take a look at what records are being created. So there's our our NetFlow v5 records. I made a flows5 directory and that's where these things are being are being loaded. Um, now I can use the nfdump command and I can feed it one of these records and I'm just gonna put it into um, a record like that. Let me see if I can uh, decrease this just a little bit. Actually, how about if I close that, perhaps? There we go. So here's an example of the NetFlow v5 records that we're receiving. So what do we get? We have a, a date, we have a timestamp, Generally, the timestamp is 
the beginning of the connection. Uh, I don't know what this event invalid means. Uh, I also don't know what X event means. We do get a protocol, so we're getting UDP and TCP records. All of them are IPv4, incidentally. Um, we have our source IPs, source port, directionality, destination IP, destination port, and then we have the uh, source port, uh, our source IP and source port of the record creator, so the NetFlow probe in this case, which all the zeros probably mean localhost, localhost. Uh, and again, this is localhost to localhost, even though I did use the public uh, RFC 1918 address, uh, IP address for this system. And we can see a count of the in bytes and the out bytes. Now, you can see some of this here. Now, this is one of the, this is one of the interesting aspects of, of NetFlow records. Let's take a look at these here. These two records represent the same connection. In fact, there's others down here that represent the same connection as well. So this connection from port 57054 to port 22, that's one of the SSH sessions that I have uh, up ahead or uh, above here. NetFlow typically does not combine these records in real time like you would get uh, using something like Zeek. In fact, um, as the connection is staying open, this implementation of NetFlow is sending more records so as you can see here, these two records down here also represent the same connection and the byte counts are just adding up. Now, ideally you would like, a, uh, at least for my purposes, I would like a single record with all the connections in both directions. We're not getting that here. Um, let's take a look at the V9 flows. So to do that, I'm just gonna open up another window, keep everything straight. And I'm going to look in the flows nine directory. And here is my record. All right, let me uh, decrease that a little bit. Okay, actually I wonder if I can make that a little bit larger. There we go. This looks exactly the same as what we saw before. Um, this is simply in the capability to use V9. So these are V9 records technically because the source of this uh, data is NetFlow V9. However, I'm not using any of the extensions of V9 to generate this data. Um, you can see we saw the same phenomenon as previous with the connections being a single direction only. So here's that same SSH connection, 57054 and uh, port 22. Let's see if any of our, uh, what our Zeek logs might look like. Um, we're getting those records coming through there. Let me do this. Actually, hold on. So this is interesting. There is, as of yet, no record for 57054 in the connection log, most likely because that connection has not closed yet. So let's see, I will do something that maybe will generate uh, a record in all three types of activity that we can take a look at. So here's a new connection. And this, mm -hmm. I would love to know which of my connections is the new one that I just started. Um, well, I probably could just exit and see what changed. Or actually I could take a look and see which NetFlow record might have just been created. That's one way to do it, I suppose. Or even which Zeek log was just created. Let's do that. But the Zeek log will not be created until I exit this con this uh, connection. So let's do that. We'll exit that connection. And aha, here's my record. I bet this is the record for the connection that I just closed. 
and that is using port 57282. 57282. So let's go through here and take a look at our what we have here. Now this is something else to consider when you're looking at these NetFlow logs. The NetFlow logs periodically will turn over. So you can see here it looks like they're going through some type of uh, maybe five minute cycle. I think that's the default if I don't, or actually no, I think I set that by when I first set this thing up. In fact, let's go over commands here. Uh, yeah, maybe the default is five minutes. It's not listed there in the uh, in the syntax. So I'm thinking that the con connection I just created and then closed will appear in my NetFlow logs in the next two minutes because I'm currently at uh, 2.33 p.m. local time on this system. So why will we do that? Let's just generate a few more records here or just take a look at a few more records. Let's see what we have. Okay, let's see what else we have to look at. Now, okay, this is interesting. I just noticed this record here does have IPv6. Let's see if there's an equivalent in my flows5 directory. Hmm. There's an IGMP, Internet Group Messaging Protocol message. I do not see any IPv6 messages in my NetFlow v5. So I don't know for sure, but possibly one of the differences you get going from 5 to 9 is that 9 might give you IPv6 out of the box, which is appreciated. Um, so there's the 6, or excuse me, there's the uh, yeah, IPv6 record that appears. That looks like another broadcast uh, that we didn't see with the... IPv, uh, we didn't see in the um, NetFlow v5 version. So I've got a few, let's see what else could we look at here. Well let's just, you know what, let's step back for a second and, and think about this for a moment. Here you can see when you're dealing with these NetFlow records you're getting the basics of a connection. You're getting a timestamp. You're getting a uh, IP protocol, TCP, UDP. IGMP in the, in the this earlier one we saw. Uh, you're getting port information and you're getting byte and packet counts. Actually, not getting, <laughs> you're getting simple um, uh, byte counts. You're not getting packet counts, actually. What is this useful for? This type of data is useful when you want to answer fundamental but uh, admittedly basic questions. You want to know if at this day, at this time, did someone have a connection or perhaps even a connection attempt from one IP address to another? And if they did, what ports were in use? And if the connection was successful, how much data could have been transferred? That's the type of thing you can answer with NetFlow. Now that's an important uh, question to answer, or those are important questions to answer, because you can use that information to further inform your investigation. You can't necessarily solve an investigation using that data, but it's definitely a place to start. And this is one of the reasons why NetFlow records, or just simple logs like this, have been so successful for several decades at this point. They allow you to answer very basic questions. And you may not be in a situation where you can deploy a full uh, Zeek sensor or another network screen monitoring platform on a network. You may have a distributed enterprise where you have a small office and the only piece of equipment that you have any hope of interacting with at that remote location is the local router that provides internet connectivity. And you have to beg, borrow, and steal in order to get that thing to export NetFlow records. And you can do that and now you need a place to put those NetFlow records. And you can use that data to answer very simple questions. This is the reality for many organizations, and many organizations do not have the ability to fully instrument every network that they have to the extent that they would like. And so you simply take what you can get and hope to use the information that you collect as a way to justify further investment, further visibility, uh, better capabilities, more data, 
richer data that you can get with something like Zeek and other network security monitoring tools. So I, if you can't tell, I have a lot of experience uh, being in that very situation. And so that's one of the reasons why um, I, if I, if I can only get NetFlow from a location, I will get it. And in those situations, the remote system, like in this case, this firewall or perhaps a router is acting as a probe. And then I can set up a collector and then look at my records using a viewer as I've, as I've done in this, in this demonstration. Now let's go back to our records here. Let's see what we have to work with. And okay, we have a new record. You mentioned, I, I mentioned earlier that these were timing out after five minute intervals. So this is our new record here. And I was looking for uh, a new port 22 connection. So this is, I think this is it here, 57258. There it is. So there's an example of a record that was created uh, as a result of activity that I took on the system. In fact, do I see it here? 57258, no, I guess I don't see it here. Oh no, there it is right there, 57258. Anyway, this, I hopefully this has been a way for you to take a look at NetFlow records, uh, a, a way to set up a probe, uh, a collector and a viewer, and a way to com uh, compare them in a pretty straightforward way with what you would get using Zeek. And if you have any questions about this, uh, please feel free to um, ask me. I'm happy to put the commands that I, I set up here into the uh, comments on the video. And I am trying now to interact with users over the, uh, over the comments. So if you have any questions, please, please feel free to, to ask. Uh, furthermore, if you would like to interact on, a, on an easier basis, um, feel free to visit the Slack channel. And we have on the Zeek homepage, you'll see here, um, you, can, you can click on the uh, Slack link there and you'll get an invitation to join the channel. Uh, finally, I have forgotten to say this in all the other videos that I've done for, for Zeek in Action. Please uh, like this video and hopefully subscribe and even uh, ring the bell there so you get notifications when uh, new videos are created. And so uh, with that, I hope you've enjoyed this video of, of comparing Zeek connection logs with NetFlow records. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them uh, below uh, or interact with us on the, the Zeek Slack or the mailing list or Twitter. We're trying to be more interactive in all of those channels. And good luck looking for suspicious and malicious activities in your Zeek logs.